Hello there. In this video, we'll talk about why using environment variables within a React app to store sensitive information like API keys is a bad idea. We'll discuss how it can affect the privacy of your API key and also a better way of doing it. So let's get into it. So here is the documentation of Create React App to add custom environment variables to your React app. So if you're new to React, uh, Create React App is a way to create a React project. And this is the documentation pertaining to that uh, Create React App. So right off the bat, we can see that there is a warning here. So it says, uh, do not store any secrets such as API keys in your React App. That is because uh, the environment variables are actually embedded into the build, which is the production build. So it will be exposed to users on the web page and they will be able to dig through your network requests and the production build and get hold of your API key. So that is the crux of uh, this video. So why it is bad to add API keys in environment variables uh, within a React app and what is a better way to do it. So for the sake of uh, this video and to have a third party API, we'll be using News API here. So this is the official documentation of News API. And uh, to actually make requests to the News API, you need an API key for location or authorization purposes. So once you sign up and complete the process, you'll be assigned an API key, and then you can use it to authenticate your requests to News API endpoints. So it gives us three different ways to authenticate a request. The first one is using the query string where the API key will be included directly in uh, the URL. So this is unsafe because it will be exposed right in the URL when you make the request. So a safer option would be to use a HTTP header. So we have uh, two different options here. Uh, one is XAPI key, that is one header, and the other one is authorization. And the API key would essentially be the value assigned to you uh, once you sign up. And if your API key is invalid, you'll get a 401 response, or a response. The endpoint that uh, I'll be using for this uh, video would be top headlines. So this is the uh, URL for the endpoint, top headlines. So you can give the country here. Uh, of course, we won't be using it in the URL, the API key. You'll be using it in the header, request header. And also we have uh, other parameters uh, that we can give uh, in the endpoint like the categories, sources, and so on. So do check it out if you're interested in building a new app and you would like use a way to be the source of the data. So build a simple uh, new app here, just to space the news headlines. And uh, these are the news cards with information on different articles. So it just has the information like the author, the source, uh, the publish date, title, uh, some description uh, this is essentially an excerpt uh, from the complete article and if you want to read the full article i uh, just click on the link and it will open up in a new tab so it's a pretty simple app now let's get into the code i'm using visual studio code so i will not be going over uh, the entire code i just refer to the parts of the code that are pertinent so we have uh, two components. Uh, one is the newsfeed and the other one is newsfeed item. The newsfeed has the uh, bulk of the code that does the table lifting. And it has all the state management, like the uh, collection of the articles, like the news articles. Then it captures the request error in case the request fails for some reason so that it could be displayed on the web page. And then we have the news API URL here. Uh, this is the top headlines endpoint of the news API. Uh, so I've given the parameters country India, category general, and uh, here we have the method uh, that does the fetch call to the news API to get the data. So we have the news API URL and the request options. Let's take a quick look at the options. Uh, it is the get method. We want it to be a course, product origin, and uh, then we have the XAPI header here to have the news API key. So the way we access news API key within the React app is using process.env.dot 
name of the environment variable. So this is actually present in .jv file. So that is how we create environment variables uh, within the React app. Create a .jv file and create an environment variable. So one rule is that uh, all environment variables should start with uh, React underscore app. And after that, you can give any name that is fitting. So because it's use API key, I just gave that here. Before I show the content of the .in file, let me replace the actual API key with a dummy API key uh, for privacy reasons, which is the whole point of this video. So I'll be right back after I switch out the actual API key with the dummy one. Okay, here is the content of the .in file. So we have the environment variable here and have a dummy API key here. So as a side note, uh, whenever you make changes to .in file, you have to restart the server, the React server. And since we're using the production build, uh, we just terminate with Control C. And now to actually create a new production build with uh, new changes, I'll run the command npm run build. So take a minute. So I'll be back once it's done. So the build has been created successfully. And the way to so hyphen s build. So we'll have a new build folder uh, within the React frontend folder, uh, which is where we created the build. So we are essentially spinning up the server from that build. So hit enter, and the server is up and running on localhost 3000. So now let's go to localhost 3000 on the server. It's already there. We just have to refresh it, and we'll see an error saying that Rebecca is invalid. Of course, it is because we switched it up with a dummy API key. So now we get to the interesting part on why it is actually a bad idea to add API keys as environment variables. So let's pull up the dev tools. So we are on the network tab. Um, we send another request. You we'll see the 401, which is the unauthorized uh, request for the new CAPI endpoint. If we scroll down a bit, you'll we'll see the request header here and right there you can see that we have the XAPI key and we have the API key exposed. In. So if we go back to Visual Studio Code, uh, that's exactly the key that we have given in the .env file. So it has been exposed in the uh, API request in the header. So the user will easily be able to get hold of your API key by looking at the request header. Another place that uh, they can dig through is uh, the production build. So we go to the debugger uh, tab here. So this is the Mozilla Firefox browser. So there you go to the debugger, uh, JavaScript, that is the uh, static build. And uh, this is the production build here. Let me copy the API key so that we can search with that value. Try to find an instance of that. Control lab, copy the value, and you see we have a result there. And it's uh, exposed in uh, production build as well because it is embedded uh, during the build process. So if we go to the components, uh, new feed, so the line of code that actually stores the environment variable is uh, this line. It's storing it in use API key variable and process.env the environment variable name. So we compare this with the production build, you see that uh, the variable name has been replaced with T. So it is important that you check the presence of API key by using directly the value and not the variable name because those will be changed in the production build. So this is why it is a bad idea to actually add your API keys as React environment variable. So what is a better way to do it? So the better way would be actually to have a backend. So let's go back to our Visual Studio Code here. If we scroll up, actually have another folder, Express Backend. So that is how this project is organized. You have the React frontend, and then you have an Express Backend. So having a backend, which in this case happens to be Express, is a good idea so that you can delegate the task of making the call to the new CPA endpoint to the backend. So the React would then essentially make a call or a request to the Express middleware uh, or 
particular endpoint and then the express would in turn make a request to the new CPA endpoint, get the data and send it back to uh, the BI front end. So that would be a better way of avoiding any exposure of API keys to the users, be it in uh, the request header or the production build. So if we go to the Express backend, uh, we have a .env file there as well. So this is kind of uh, the very great environment variables in Node projects and React projects. So the Express backend is essentially a Node project. And if we go to the .env there, so we have uh, the new API key, that is the environment variable name. And we have the same uh, dummy API here. And we just have the server.js, which handles the request. Let me pull this down a bit, so we can see more code. So we just have the server here uh, to handle requests from uh, the React frontend. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, packages being imported here. So we won't be having the fetch API uh, like we had in the React frontend. Go to the new speed. We're making the request uh, to the new API using the fetch API here. We won't be having that in Express. So we'll be using Axios for that. And we also need the codes cross origin. So if we go to the uh, browser, uh, we are making the call on port 3000 localhost and uh, we actually will be configuring Express backend on same localhost but a different port, port 3001. So that is with uh, the listen here and port variable. Let's go to the port variable. See that here, so it is the same uh, environment variable port being accessed here. We'll get to that in a bit and we have the port 2001. So this is uh, an or condition. Uh, so if this is false or uh, null, we'll be setting the port to 2001. So because the request and response exchange is happening between two different ports of local host is considered cross origin. So for that reason, we have to enable uh, cross origin request handling on the server. So that is why we have the code package here. And the .env package, it's for uh, extracting the environment variables into uh, the Express server here. And of course, we need the Express package to instantiate the Express server, which is happening here, uh, the app variable. So we have the same uh, new CPU URL here, and uh, we have the process can be new API key to extract the API key here. So, Let's go back to the port here. Uh, the port we have is process uh, The port becomes more relevant when you actually post your app on some third party service. They're like hosting or Heroku or some other service. So there, that service will automatically assign some port to your app or the Express backend. And it, will, it is a neat way to pick up uh, whichever port was assigned and set in the port variable. So that is the uh, significance of the process that we got code there. So this is how we use the code middleware, uh, app.use. Then we have the middleware to handle the get request from the uh, React Fractal. So we have this uh, URL here, news data. So now, if we go to the React Frontend, the news be component. So now, uh, what we have to do is we have to switch the uh, URL that we're using here. So directly calling the new CPI endpoint. We will be making the call to the uh, Express server. So we comment this line of code and then comment this line of code so that we're now talking to localhost 2001. Uh, that is the port on which the Express server is listening for requests. And we have the news data here. So which is the URL mapped uh, for that get middleware in the Express server. So we have the normal code uh, handling of the request. So like I said, we use the Axios here to make the get request. New CPI URL, we have the header here uh, with the XAPI key and value uh, extracted from the environment variable. And we have some handling here for successful requests. We extract the data, the articles, uh, from uh, the new CFA response, and then we send it back to uh, the React frontend as a JSON object. So we set the status of 200, which is okay. If in case it fails, uh, we have 
a 500 code, which is to signify that there is an issue with the server. And we also send a error message as the JSON object. So let's spin up the Express Server too. So the way to do it is we go to the Express backend and then npm start. So it will pretty much run uh, whatever command is going to that start script. So in our case, it's nodemon uh, server.js. So you can actually see that in package.json for the express backend. Uh, within the scripts, we have the start there. And there we have the mapping of nodemon server.js. So know that our express server is also up and running on port 3001. Uh, we just need to make changes on the React frontend to make those requests to uh, the express backend and not directly to the new CPI endpoint. Let's do that. So let's go to newsfeed component. Uh, we've already uh, the URL here and we don't need this line of code because we no longer will be using uh, environment variables to store API keys. And we also don't need it in the header here. We can come into code as well. Then we have to switch the uh, pitch call here. We don't need the request options. Just uh, send the get request for uh, the new URL. Then we have to comment that out as dependency here. And I think that's pretty much all the changes that we need to make to switch from direct call to new CPI to express backend. Let's save this. And yeah, so because we have changed the code, we have to rebuild uh, the production build with the new code and restart the server. So let's do that. Let's terminate uh, the server here, the React Frontend server. Let's run uh, the npm run build from at the game to create the production build uh, with the new code. This so I can take a minute, so I'll be back on this turn. Okay, the production build has been created. Uh, let's uh, start the server again. Let's see the serve-s build command. Okay, the server is up and running on port 3000. So let's go to the browser and refresh it. Now you see a different error message. We're actually getting this from the Express. So let's go to the uh, network tab, go to the uh, news data here. So previously we had news API endpoint for one uh, failure in authorized request. Now we have a new one, request to news data, which is the Express backend and 500, so we find it's an uh, issue with the server. So we click on it, there's internal server error, which is accurate. And if we go to the request header, we'll see that we don't have the XAPI key here because we're not sending it in the request. And so the API key is not exposed here and we won't be able to see it in uh, the response header as well. So if we go to the response, uh, we see the message here uh, that was sent back by the Express server. The API key has expired or it's invalid, which is actually being displayed on the web page. So if you go to the uh, debugger now to look at the production build, uh, static, JS, main, and if you try to search for that dummy key again, okay, let me copy that. And if I search for that here, you'll see no results were found because you're not accessing that environment variable anywhere in our code now in the React frontend, and we're also not sending it as part of the request header. It's all being delegated to the Express backend, and the frontend won't be able to get hold of whatever is happening on the back. So that is a safer way to access the privacy of your API key from getting exposed to the user. So to summarize, it is actually unsafe to add API keys in React environment variables because typically third-party APIs require you to add the API keys in the header. And so it will get exposed in the header when you make the call directly from the front end and also in the production build because React creates a static production build and embeds the environment variables in the code right here. So the safer way is actually to have an expert backend. Let me enlarge this. Okay. So the safer way is actually to have an expert backend and delegate the task of making requests to the third party API, which is the news API here, uh, to that back. So that way, uh, no API key will have to be exposed by the front end and all of that will be in the .env file uh, in the form of an environment variable in the back. So then uh, no API key is exposed in the API header, I mean the request header or the production group. So I hope you found this video insightful 
And if you did, do consider liking the video and like to see more videos like this on web development, software development, or tech in general. Uh, do consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.